It astounds me that people who are going to buy a new stereo system or a new automobile or a refrigerator will spend a great deal of time reading the magazines, looking into the consumer reports and selecting the very best one for the money. But when it comes to their eternal souls, they flippantly say, well, everybody has their own belief, you know. One day, a famous preacher in America, Harry Ironside, was preaching on the streets. A passerby interrupted him and said, excuse me, sir, how do you expect an ordinary man like me to figure out the right way? There are thousands of beliefs in the world. Harry Ironside said, sir, thousands of beliefs? I only know of two. <laughs> said the man, there's Buddhism and Confucianism and Hinduism and Islam and all the isms of Christendom. What do you mean only two beliefs? Ironside said, there are those who believe they can save themselves and those who believe they need a savior. All of the religions of the world basically tell you there's something you need to do to save yourself. But the message of Christianity is unique in this, that it proclaims to men and women a savior. There are many people who say, well, the Bible is just another holy book. They're all pretty much the same. Now, people who say that haven't done their homework. What God did for us so that we could authenticate the message of Jesus as he came into the world was before ever he came, hundreds of years before he came, to paint a portrait in words that would exactly describe him when he did come. One prophet said that he was going to be betrayed and you would assume that his betrayal would be done by his enemies. No, said another prophet, it would be his friend, his confidant. You would presume that if he was betrayed by the Jews, that he would be executed by stoning. That was the traditional form of execution by the Jews. You remember they did it with Stephen. They tried to do it with Paul. No, says another prophet, they will pierce his hands and his feet. In fact, the description of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus, written about a thousand years before it happened, describes his crucifixion more than 700 years before crucifixion was invented. You would assume that if a man was to be sold for a price, according to Jewish law, a man would be sold for 50 pieces of silver. No, said the scripture, he will be sold for 30 pieces of silver. Now, isn't that an astounding fact? The very people who were trying to disprove his messiahship knew that scripture. And all they had to do to disqualify him from being the Messiah was pay 31 pieces of silver and he wouldn't have been the Messiah. And they paid 30 pieces of silver and sealed the amount of money in the public record. Where would the Messiah be born? Where would he come from? Matthew quotes, first of all, that Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, Judah. So said Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, perhaps 750, 800 years before the Lord Jesus came, Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, Judah. You arrange the town you're born in. You try to arrange the family you're born to. I suggest it would be a bit tough to do. But you see, that's not the extent of it. Because as I pointed out, it was those who did not want him to look like the Messiah who paid the 30 pieces of silver and who authenticated his Messiahship by that. I've given you fulfilled prophecies. There are over 300 of them. Now, my friend, you've got to do something with that. You can ignore it. But if you examine the Word of God, you will discover that unlike any other religion in the world, God has taken your brain seriously and he has given you hard evidence to believe that Jesus has proven himself to be the Messiah, the Son of God, and declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. Christianity is the only belief system in the world that gives you evidence in history to authenticate its truthfulness. But there's more. 
Some people think that if they do good in certain situations, that they will get a credit with God to overcome the bad things they've done. Some people say, well, I think I'm a pretty good person. Listen, you don't even come up to your own standards, let alone God's. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, in other words, by seeking to live a good life and keep the Ten Commandments, live by the golden rule, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Everybody falls short of God's standard. No matter how wicked a sinner you are, no matter how good you think you are, God has made an offer to the human race. To those who find the way barred, because their own sin and failure has kept them from meeting God's standard, there is an alternative. It is the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all those who believe, for all have sinned. Christianity is the only belief system in the world that lets you be honest with God about your sin. You ask someone who's trying to get to heaven by the good works, how are you doing? Oh, not bad. Oh, really? <laughs> not bad, huh? Oh, doing pretty good. Doing my best. Oh, you are. I've never met anybody who does their best, even by their own standards. God doesn't ask you to pretend you're okay. He wants you to be honest with him. Now listen carefully. And you may not believe me at first, but it's true. Christianity is the only belief system in the world that offers a savior. Islam doesn't offer a savior. Islam says save yourself. It's a do-it-yourself religion. And all the religions of the world fall under the same category. You do it, and if you do it well enough, you'll get to heaven. And as long as you think you can save yourself, any religion will do. But when you find out you need a savior, the list is very short. There's only one, and his name is Jesus. Now, save yourself is an absolutely ludicrous statement. If you're in a burning building and you're screaming out the window, help, save me, save me, and I'm walking by and I say, ah, oh, save yourself. <laughs> Listen, if you can save yourself, you don't need to be saved. You can't save yourself. When Christ died on the cross, he paid the debt you owed. And in exchange for your sin, taking your sin, he has offered you his rightness, his righteousness as a gift, a free exchange. Salvation is not something you earn. Salvation is a gift. Every other religion ultimately says that when you stand before God, you're desperately hoping that he's going to uh, fudge a bit to let you into heaven. There's no follower of any religion that says, when I stand before God someday, I'm going to say to him, okay, God, here's your challenge. Put my life up on this side, put your law on that side, and I challenge you to find one thing wrong with my life. Is that what people are going to say? Oh, no. They're hoping against hope that somehow they're going to slip in, maybe in the top half percent, you know. Maybe they're going to get in if God won't be too careful at looking at their life. However, can I expect to get into heaven? Oh, says God, here's what we'll do. I'll account your debt to my son. He'll pay it in full. So God sets the standard. God hands over the bill, and then he pays it himself. Examine the evidence. Not only the evidence in the Bible, the evidence in your own heart that you're a sinner and you need a savior, and you can't save yourself. And then read what the Bible has to say about the Lord Jesus, the savior of sinners, he came to save you. And if you will, as the Bible declares, be honest with God about your sin. That's what the Bible calls repentance. And receive the Lord Jesus as the savior of sinners. Say, oh God, I don't know why you'd want me. I'm damaged goods. But you said that whoever came to you, you would in no wise cast out. Take me now, save me now, I give up. I'll accept the gift of God, eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Hallelujah. Let Lord Jesus Christ shine forth. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us. Welcome to another live stream with DCCI Ministries. And tonight we have the privilege of having Brother Usama with us, Usama Duck Dog. But also we, the video we just watched it actually put together by his ministries. So um, it is double pleasure. Peace of Christ be with you, brother. How are you? Hello, Sister Hatun. It's good to be with you and uh, uh, greetings to you and all those who are watching us in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. How are you doing, brother? Doing wonderful. I'm so excited about this study. It is one of my favorite. Uh, uh, as uh, you maybe have already advertised, that Joseph uh, is the first story which made me fall in love with the Bible. I remember uh, reading the, that Genesis account with my dad when I was maybe roughly around eight, nine years old. And I loved it and I loved it. And many times as I read it through my teenagers, I enjoyed it until I read it in the Quran. And I was very, very disappointed. And I feel sorry for all the Muslims who believe that the Quran is the word of Allah and not realizing what they're reading is a foolish counterfeit to that which was of course, and it's still in a perfect shape written in the Holy Bible. Obviously, uh, Muhammad copied so many from the Talmud, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later, and he added to his Quran and corrupted one of my favorite accounts. And I, and I know sometimes I'll be using the word story, but uh, Joseph is not just a story. It is a true story. That's why we use the word account. Uh, he ruined my favorite story or my favorite account in the Bible in these uh, few pages uh, or uh, verses in the Quran, sadly. Us Usama, I am very disappointed that you are disappointed with the Quran. That is just so <laughs> heartbreaking. Um, so as Brother Usama kind of put it up, uh, we will be looking at the Quranic uh, version of the story of Joseph today. And I think we will be doing a couple of sessions as follow-up because our aim is today to just try to keep under an hour this live stream, um, wherever we stop, we will stop and we will have um, in a in couple of weeks, we will have the follow up sessions to make sure, make sure yeah. that we uh, cover it all. Uh, since yeah. as a Christian, we've got these basic principles. Actually, as a human, we have very basic principles of like sharing is caring. So Brother Usama is going to share his disappoint disappointments with us <laughs> so that. We will be all caring for him as we hear how he got disappointed by the author of the Quran. That's that's okay. You know what? <laughs> one thing, Sister Hatun, one thing very important. Uh, I like to do, when I minister to Muslim people, who I believe it's a hopeless situation uh, to share the gospel with them, I like to share with them the story of Joseph. And uh, I always say what I'm about to say right now when I talk to Muslims. You know, I'm going to bring to you the proof uh, by comparing the Bible to the Quran to a very important uh, 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 story or account which uh, have nothing to do with any doctrines. So I'm not talking about Trinity. I'm not talking about the death of Christ. I'm not talking about anything specific. I'm talking about a an account and a story, a story which was written literally by Moses a good 30, um, 3,500 years ago. And Muhammad wrote it in his Quran a good uh, 1400 years ago. And I'm going to say, forget about Christianity, forget about Judaism, forget about Islam. We're talking about a logical study. We're going to examine the information which is written in the Bible, compare it to that which is written in the Quran, and let's get religion out of it, and let's get our prejudice out of it, remove the glasses of Islam and the glasses of Judaism and the glasses of Christianity out. And let us examine these two stories. And as we will be doing the study, I'm going to be asking lots of questions. And here's my challenge for any of these great scholars, the great Allahology, Allahology, Allahology is a, I made a word that I cannot say theology because we're not talking about theo in the Quran. Those who believe in Allah to be God, I'm looking for someone of them who's great, who can examine these questions and answer them using the pages of the Quran. And I know, and I know, Muslim will tell you, you, you cannot understand the Quran unless you read the scholar's interpretation. That's what actually I did here in these two volume books, exposing the truth about the Quran, the revelation of error. And in volume one, we talked about Joseph. 
But in there, I read, or actually I translated, Ibn Kasir interpretation to these verses of the Quran in chapter 12. And in there, I asked questions. Where did Ibn Kasir come up with this information? A, did he receive it from Allah because he is another prophet who came after Muhammad? And the answer is absolutely not. B, he figured out because he's a very smart man. You cannot be smart a man, smart woman, intelligent to understand the verses of the Quran and give me the answer by simply copying that which is written in the Bible. So here we go. If you're going to use my Bible, my Bible to understand the Quran, I'm sorry. That does not make any sense, especially when we know that this story is the best of the stories of the Quran. So I did not pick up Moses. I did not pick up Noah. I did not take a big up Abraham, which is real good studies. I talk about all these in my two volume books. That's why we have over 750 pages there. But I picked up the best of the stories of the Quran. And we'll ask over 100 questions. If somebody will count them, it's going to be maybe 110, 120. I don't know exactly how many questions. And the challenge, Sister Hatun, to all these great scholars of Islam, to give me an answer for one of these over 100 questions. Answer one right. And you want the debate. I'm not kidding you. At the same time, you have to understand, when you answer that question, you cannot use the Bible. I say it again. Do not use this book. After all, you believe that Bible is a corrupt book. So forget about the Bible. Let's concentrate on the Quran the best of the stories of the Quran, the best of the revelation which Allah gave to Muhammad, and give me an answer for one question. And by the way, all these questions which I'm going to be asking, I can easily answer from that Bible. Okay. Logic, common so, sense. Go ahead, Peter. So um, one of the things I recently was reminded that when it comes to Islam, we shouldn't expect Muslims to use logic. Um, uh, there was a uh, Muslim uh, missionary was simply expressing like, forget your, uh, forget your uncle. <laughs> he was saying, forget your brain, don't, don't use logic. Um, and you, you are planning to bring up approximate hundred questions um, of one of the Islamic character. And then you are expecting Muslims to respond to your uh, okay. questions. I just don't want you to kind of be double disappointed. Just beware, <laughs> answer might never and never and never come. Okay. How about that? You examine your brain and your heart. Do not use logic and tell me which book give us the right story. Okay. We're, we're not talking yeah. about one or two questions. We're talking a lot over 100. Trust me, it's going to be 110, maybe 120. Yeah, okay. so... Um, uh, just um, j j as we kind of just before we start, I just want also remind everyone to remember Quran makes a claim that Quran is well detailed, well explained, and there is no contradictions in it. So therefore, yeah. every question Brother Usama is going to put forward should be very easily answered by Muslims. Sure, sure. According to the claim of Allah in his Quran, as we're going to see even in the first two verses of that chapter. Uh, the story of Joseph is one of the unique stories in the Quran because I do not have to go through 114 chapter uh, to come with the answer. It's mentioned in the Quran only twice in chapter 12, which is the uh, only story in the Quran written together about one guy not jumping and from one story to another. And we got there a good, um, uh, the total of the verses is 111, 111 verses in the Quran to give us the story of Joseph. There is one verse mentioned about Joseph somewhere else. We're going to get to it later. It's not that important. So, uh, but uh, that is uh, that is the best. Uh, the reason I believe it's the best, I personally believe it is the best of the stories of the Quran because you don't see too many contradictions there. Except when you compare <laughs> the Bible, you see how it is completely distorted. Completely distorted. So, we ready to share the, the yeah. screen, sister. Yes, whenever you are, whenever you are ready, we are ready from this side, uh, and we, we we are focusing though in case people missed it, Surah twelve. Let's put Usama and the powerpoints on the screen. Um, I need to get rid of myself. Oops, sorry. That's Usama. That's his powerpoints. Yes, we are ready, brother. Whenever you are ready. All right. 
Well, we're going to go with the uh, first uh, three verses, which is the introduction of the story of Joseph in the Quran. Uh, I'll see if I can play it. If you can hear the sound of not, you have to help me by reading these verses for me. These are verses of the clear book. Surely we have sent it down. An Arabic Quran, perhaps you might understand. We narrate to you the best of the stories by which we reveal unto you this Quran, and before it, you were among the unaware. Okay, can you pause? Wonderful. Just, Hello. Brother, just a second. Brother, just a second. Um, so can I just sure. get quick confirmation from the chat that um, I heard from this site that what was read on the screen for the verse. Uh, can you just confirm that you were able to hear the verse as well? Um once we get the confirmation, we continue, brother. Sure, sure. Uh, if not, if not, you bless me by reading these verses one more time for me. I am, I am happy to read it. Um, if you would like me to read it, brother. All right. You know what? Let's take it one one verse at a time. You and I forget about the sound bite. I'm gonna skip the sound bite because sometimes people can hear, sometimes they cannot hear. So read for me just one verse at a time, sister. And um, a word without meaning. These are verses of the clear book. Well, we say, I say this A-L-R, Alif, Lam, Ra, uh, a word without meaning. By the way, when I read it in my Arabic Quran, I find that they are connected. So it's not A-L-R, it is a word. Yeah. Alr, Alr, okay. Now, I said it is a word without meaning. Well, some Muslim scholars said, actually, it, they have meaning. And only Allah knows the meaning of these letters. <laughs> And I said, okay, if only Allah knows the, the meaning of this word, that mean I do not have a meaning for it. You do not have meaning for it. Amazingly, when you go to the different scholars who interpret the Quran, who translate the Quran to English language, another person will say, no, 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 no. Nobody knows its meaning except Allah and Muhammad. So Muhammad did know the meaning of Alif Lam Ra. And then you go to another guy, he's so smart, he actually gave us the meaning of it. They make up meaning for it. They fabricate meaning for it. But Forget about that portion. If any of uh, your viewer uh, know actually the real meaning for these letters, I would love to know. So in my next print of the Quran, I can put the meaning of, of these words. But here we go. These are the verses of the clear book. It is so clear, my dear sister, to the point we do not even understand the first word in the book. How do you like that? Um, contradictions and well-detailed book. Great for me. It, I mean, like it, the it, first it, verse, it just, you, yeah. The first verse just screams out where it says like, "These are this is clear book." Just from first words, you kind of, kind of expect you would expect to make sense of it, but so far, no. No, exactly, exactly. And uh, then we're gonna go to uh, verse two, if you don't mind. Go ahead, read one, one more time, verse two for me. Surely we have sent it down an Arabic Quran, perhaps. You might understand. Allah, the God of perhaps. Allah, the God of perhaps. That's not the God of my Bible. So in, when we say perhaps, and Allah used the word perhaps all over the Quran, I have a problem with. But then he said what? Shouldn't we have sent down to you an Arabic Quran? What happened if we found out in that chapter, in that uh, story, many words are not Arabic? What are we going to do about that? Uh, we can call it miracles of Islam. Exactly, especially if it is Hebrew or <laughs> Syriac or uh, Latin or Greek or whatever other word, as we're going to see in our study. So what? See what, what? Here we go. Here is the problem. If a Muslim reads the Quran to shake their head, front, back, front, back, or right, left, right, left, alif, lam, ra, tilka ayat al kitab al mubin. That does not work with people who have some logic or common sense. I know you told me most Muslims do not have logic or common sense, but seriously, what does Alif, Lam, Ra mean? Al -ra. It's not three separate letters, it's a word. Alif, Lam, Ra. The Lam is attached to the Ra in the Arabic Quran, which we use in Egypt, Hafs Quran, okay? Now, when Allah said to me, surely, you know what surely mean? It's like some other people translated indeed. Laqad, or surely, in. Here's the word in, I believe. So when you say surely, that means you know for sure what you're talking about. Surely we have, we is Allah, have sent down the Quran in Arabic. It's not Arabic. That story we're reading now, we're going to see many words are not Arabic. Perhaps, surely perhaps, these two words could not be together in one sentence, Sister Hatun. It's a surely or perhaps. 
God help us. It is amazingly okay. disappointed. Disappointed. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be as nice as I can to the Muslim friends who will be able to watch, who will be watching this video. Let's go to verse three. Go ahead. So so far, what we have is which says clear book, which is not, and then um, Allah is the God of perhaps. Verse three. We narrate to you the best of the stories by which we reveal unto you this Quran and before it. You were among the unaware. There is some fact here. Before Muhammad received that story, he was among those, uh, what you call the unaware, the one who do not know. Ghafil, uh, he had no clue what's in the story of Joseph because Muhammad was uh, not, uh, 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 he never read the Genesis account. As a matter of fact, I believe from at, at the time we finished our study to these 111 verses, I will know for sure that Muhammad still among those the unaware. As a matter of fact, I challenge any Muslim who will be watching these studies to tell me which part he understands from the Quran. Even when we study the Quran today, these 111 verses, we will end being among those who are unaware of the true biblical account of Joseph. This is the best of the Quran. Just remember every time we ask a question and every, every time we investigate these 11, uh, 111 verses, that this is the best of the Quran. Just don't forget, it is the best of the Quran. Not the weakest story, not the weakest links. That's the strongest link. This is the best of the story which Allah revealed to Muhammad. Maybe if Muhammad had read the Bible, he would have wrote a completely different story than that which is written in his Quran. Go ahead to verse 4, sister. When Joseph said to his father, O oh my father, surely I saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrating before me. Oh, good, 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 good. Who's speaking here? Joseph. Speaking to who? Speaking to his father. Told him about what? About the dream. What dream? 11 stars and the sun and the moon prostrated before him. Bowing down before him. Okay. I know I'm going to use a word, use logic, use common sense. How do you think <laughs> from that verse? I know, Hatun, you have logic in common sense. How old do you think that Joseph, when he was telling this dream to his father? I don't he, know. He shoot, shoot the number. Ah, from zero, he just was born. Baby came out of his mama's belly uh, up to maybe, say, you know, 10, 15 years old. I, what do I, you think? I, I would guess uh, his teenage. Teenage. Okay. You know the language. Oh, my father, surely I saw 11 star. And why everybody in the Quran, Allah and, and Muhammad, everybody use the word surely. Do you really have to use surely there? But that's okay. Never mind. Never mind. That's a dumb question. Okay. Uh, so now Joseph is a grown up boy. I, I guess maybe 12, 13. I don't know. We're going to find a little bit later the miraculous of the miraculous of the stories, uh, 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 the, the greatest point of the story of Joseph in the Quran, that he actually was a little baby. Little baby, uh, I go for it, two years old, maybe three, but not older than that. But, uh, but let's continue. So now he's telling his father about the dream. Now he has a question. How many dreams did Joseph have in real life? Not in the biblical, not in the Quranic story, in the biblical story. How many dreams did, did Joseph have? Um, I I don't know. In the Bible, two dreams. One after one. In the Quran, one dream. What happened to the second dream? It got, along, got lost along the way. Muhammad forgot to put it in the Quran. <laughs> Allah forgot to reveal it to Muhammad. That's okay. No big deal. No big deal. So let's move on. To what happened now when his father heard the dream? Go ahead. He said what in verse 5? Um, he said, oh, my son. Do not relate your dream to your brothers, lest they plot a plot against you. Surely, Satan is the clear enemy towards man. So, this as a question. Did Joseph told his dream to his brothers according to the writings of the Quran? Sorry, say it again. Did Joseph told his dream to his brothers according to that verse here? If the father said, oh, my son, do not tell your dream to your brothers. Did he disobey his father and he told him the dream? Or at, did he not tell them? At this stage, so far what we read, no. Okay. And guess what? In the rest of the verses, you found that he never told them his dream. So, 
I, I am guessing as him to be teenage because he's counting the stars. He knows about the sun and the moon. He's he's capable to communicate with his father and then tell him, oh, this is a dream. And he's being obedient to his father so far. And, and the wording, and the wording, he's not, he's not like a baby talker, okay? He's a grown-up guy, okay? Yeah. A teenager. You're right about the age. That's That's 100% true. And he never told the dream to his brothers Brothers. because the father told him if he would do that, uh, Satan will bring enmity between him and his brothers. So if he never told the dream to his brothers, why did his brothers hate him? Little boy, why his brothers hated him? Hmm. Um, It's okay. Are you expecting me to kind of count down your questions, write it down? No, or? No, no, okay. No, no. I want this. And I want people who are watching us right now okay. to use their ears to hear my questions and ponder about them. Ponder. Okay. Let's go to verse six. Let's move to verse six. And therefore, your Lord will choose you and will teach you the interpretation of the sayings and will fulfill, will fulfill His grace on you and on the family of Jacob, as He fulfilled. It on your forefathers before Abraham and Isaac. Surely your Lord is knowing wise. Hmm. Notice the talk of Jacob in the verse here, verse six. It is not logical according to the biblical teaching because what the connection between verse five and verse six? There's zero connection. But what is the connection between verse six and the rest of the life of Joseph? Great connection. So the person who's writing the verses of the Quran knows about what is coming up in the life of Joseph. That's why he puts these words in Jacob's mouth. When we read the biblical account, we do not see none of these nonsensical writings. Why? First of all, Joseph did not have one dream, but he had two. Number two, he told the dreams to his father and his brothers. The father never said, Jacob never said in the Bible, and, and no, don't, don't tell your dream to your brothers. Because he was sitting there when Joseph told the dream to his brothers. As a matter of fact, he rebuked him, as we're going to read a little bit in Genesis account. But not as we read here in the Quran. This is obviously made up story. Now, let me ask a question. If you don't tell your dream to your brothers, that means the Lord has chosen you? What connection between God to choose Joseph if he told his dream or did not tell his dream? Now, another question. Uh, will this make him an interpreter of the sayings? Uh, we know in the Bible he interpreted dreams, not sayings. Hadith is saying. Ahlam is dreams. Joseph have the gift of interpreting dreams, not sayings. There are two different words. Ahlam, a hadith. Ahlam is dreams. A hadith is saying. Like we see in the Quran is the word of Allah. In the hadith is the word of Muhammad. Muhammad saying written in the hadith. So that is the same word Muhammad used in verse 6. But what is the connection between not telling his brothers his dream so Allah would choose him and Allah make him interpret the sayings. This, these are I call uh, silly questions because we're going to get some real serious questions later. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. He said what? That Allah will fulfill uh, uh, his grace on the family of Jacob. The family of Jacob. That is the sons of Jacob. As he fulfilled it, uh, on the fam, on his uh, his ancestors, of course, his uh, uh, fathers before them, which is Abraham and Isaac, and then once again, surely. I love how Allah uses the word surely all over the Quran, and everybody uses the word surely. As a matter of fact, I believe that's the largest repeated word in the Quran, surely, inna, or laqad, indeed, another word to assure this is this is fact, this is true. Surely, your Lord is knowing wise. Hmm. Uh, I, I want to go to Genesis account just to compare what we have read so far in these uh, empty five verses of the Quran in the best of the stories 
of the Quran, the story of Joseph. What do we have here, Sister uh, Hatun? Um, Genesis 37. Go ahead. Yeah, just before I read the verse, I just want to make a point, um, make a comment on the um, phrase, surely um, Allah is all-knowing wise. Every time when I, one of the basic things I learned from reading of the Quran if you if you ever read which says Allah is wise, Allah Allah is all knowing, that means Allah just said something which is disagrees with everything. He just lied, and he's trying to kind of cover up his lies. <laughs> Surely Allah doesn't know exactly. much. Exactly. Uh, okay, so Genesis yeah. Genesis chapter thirty seven, verse five to eight, mm-hmm. and Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to he told his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. And he said to them, Here, I pray, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding shavis in the field. And lo, my sheaves arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around, round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dream and for his words. First of all, this is the first dream Joseph have in the Bible. And they are in the field, and uh, they are each one of them have caught a, a sheep, it says a corn, uh, the wheat gathered together. That's what makes the word sheaves. And he said, mine will stand in the middle, and all of yours bow to mine. He did what? He had, what is this dream? We, we could not find that dream in the Quran. As I said earlier, Allah forgot to mention to Jibreel, or forgot to mention to Muhammad about the first dream. Why did Joseph tell the dream to his brothers? Because that's what happened in the Quran. His father said, don't tell your dream to your brother. Here, we see already he told his brothers. And notice, they hated him before he told the dream. And he, they hated him when he when they heard his dream because they figured out, are you going to be rule over us? Over us? Are you going to be the boss? We're going to we're going to bow down to you. You're going to rule. You're going to be the master. We're going to be your servant. What is the world you think of? Who do you think you are, Mr. Joseph? They hated him even more. Now, hated, hated, hated in this passage. We read it three times, and we're going to read it some more. If you think that Joseph is a little boy, two three years old who could not talk, could not make any sense, and he told the dream in the Quran to his father, not his brothers, there is no reason to hate him. But why is the Bible repeating the word hate, hate, hate? We're going to read some more. Because there is a history. There is a background took place between Joseph and his brothers. As a matter of fact, let's go back to Joseph's mother and Joseph's brothers' mothers. And you will have no clue what I'm talking about if you just build all your hard work to understand that book. The Quran does not give us any details about the best of the stories of the Quran. So I'm going to ask a question. Why did Joseph, why did Joseph brothers hated him? According to the Quran, there is no reason. As a matter of fact, they want to play with him. They want to have good time with him. They want to give him fun time. Let's go on. Play in the grass and have great... Oh, no, 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 no. That is the imagination of Muhammad. That is the falsehood of Allah and Jibreel. They did not know what they're talking about. But in the Bible, boy, oh boy, I'm going to answer that question for you. Why did they hate Joseph in the Bible? And the answer is in the Bible, not in the Quran. Unless you think they're wacko, thin, evil brothers who hate Joseph for no reason. To the point of death. For no reason. But let's continue with the reading of our Bible. So we go to chapter 37 and we're going to go from verse 9 to 11. So what happened here, sister? And he dreamed yet another dream and told it it's his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that thou uh, has dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brother indeed come to bow down, yourse- bow down ourselves to the, to the on the earth? And his brethren envied him 
and his father observed the sayings. Notice here, the father rebuked Joseph literally to make peace between him and his brothers. Not because he did not believe his dream. Not because he did not have a feeling like, hey, something could come out of his dreams. The second dream is the one we read on the Quran. But the problem is, in the Quran, remember, he said it to his father, but not to his brothers. And his father advised him not to tell the dream to his brothers. Here in the Bible, obviously, he saw the sun and the moon and the 11 stars bowing down before him. Ap uh, apostate or, or, or a, uh, whatever this word, I don't have to read it. I've, I've seen so I've this seen is, I, I, th I think yours is like King James Version. Yes, yeah, it's an old, yeah. old English word. I am ESV it, it, and NAV. It's going to be bowed down. It's a symbol. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, uh, then the father rebuked him and tell him what? What is this with this dream? Do you expect me and your mother and your and uh, to uh, bow down and your brother bow down before you? And listen to this. And his brother envied him. They are now more hatred with jealousy towards him. But the father observed the saying all these words was joseph was sharing his dream the father observed the, the father jacob put it in his heart he meditated on it in his mind hmm, i wonder what is this dream is all about okay i'm gonna go back to the quran we're gonna get one more piece from the quran up to verse 10 here and we back and forth between the quran and the bible to come up with a, a little comparison i want you to use your eyes, your ears, answering this simple question, which I'm asking. Uh, good luck to find the answer in the Quran. I know, I know, once again, as I said earlier, if you go to Ibn Kasir writing, for sure you will find the answer. But I'm sorry, Ibn Kasir was quoting my Bible to help the Muslims to understand the Quran. That's not how we interpret the Quran. If Ibn Kasir is a scholar, he's not a scholar at all. And I'm sorry. Scholar, you have to understand, the word scholars that mean a person who has deep knowledge of the subject he's talking about. So if you go to an eye doctor, now, believe it or not, when you go to eye doctors, it's not just one eye doctor. Years ago, 50 years ago, it's one eye doctor, and check your eyes, and you check your nose, and you check your frontal, and you check your throat, you check your ears, every one doctor. Today, eye doctor already has three surgery in my left eye by three different doctors. As a matter of fact, I need one more. It's going to be done by a different doctor. Imagine with me. In one eye, four different doctors work because every one of them, of them is expert. So they know what they're doing, and that's their expertise. Now, when you go to Muslim scholars, if it is Ibn Kasir or Al-Tabri or Al-Qurtubi or al Jalain or al Baidawi, whatever you want to pick up, they do not have a clue what they're talking about. And the evidence is this. Let us read the interpretation of these verses by any of them. They will tell you, scholar disagrees, or scholars or interpreter disagrees. Wait a minute. I said, you are the scholar. No, he's quoting to you the saying of other people about that verse. And sometimes they give you four options. Sometimes they give you 10 options of opinions. And then they ended with a famous statement, Wallahu a'lam, and Allah knows best. I'm sorry, neither you, nor your scholars, nor your Allah have a clue what is the answer for my simple questions about these best, the best of the stories of the Quran. So let's go to verse 7. Go ahead, sister. Indeed, it was in Joseph and his brothers. Sign for the inquiries. When they say, okay. Joseph... One percent time, one percent time. Good, good, good. Sorry. So the, the people, the inquirers, those the people who ask questions, saw a miracle, saw a sign. In who? In Joseph and his brothers. My question to you, my dear sister, now, and not just you, to all of the, our wonderful Muslim uh, scholars, uh, who are these uh, brothers of Joseph? I mean, how many of them? And I need their names. And I need them in the biblical order, like older to younger. The biggest, the oldest one, yeah. until the last one. Uh, can you give me an answer from the Quran about Joseph brothers? Anybody have a clue? Um, so even though you express the verse, actually, the chapter itself starts with like um, explained book. Um, and it's going to finish like well detailed book. I don't think they are giving us the names of the brothers at all, brother. 
So if I ask Ibn Kasir, who are the brothers of Jesus? Not using my Bible. Ibn Kasir, Al Tabari, Al Qurtubi, whomever you fall in love with, you're of Muslim scholars. I would like for them to give me the names, the number, and the names of Joseph brothers in the right order, older to younger. Do you think any scholar can do that? Not using the Bible. Forget about the Bible. This Bible is a corrupt book. We know it's not good. Mm. It, we it don't would, believe in it. We don't trust it. I just need to understand. It would, be, it would be difficult because um, Quran is well detailed, well explained book, and Allah doesn't share that information with Muhammad. Therefore, I think it will bring bigger questions if we hear Allah share those informations with Muslim scholars. So you cannot answer this question for me. It's a simple question. Sorry. Maybe it's just a comment. Don't tell me you cannot understand. Okay, now here's the question. Did Joseph have any sisters? You are asking I mean, too much question? questions, brother. Well, Do not ask right. questions. Do not ask questions. Well, I'm sorry. That's how I know if the Quran is really better. Uh, the best of the stories of the Quran is better. Or maybe my Genesis account. Okay, no, no, let me let me give you the answer for that. But I know, I know. Okay, let's go to Genesis uh, chapter thirty-five. Do you have a Bible with you, Hatun, or you don't have one? Um, I do have Bible with me. Good. Go to Genesis chapter thirty-five, and uh, let's read beginning from verse twenty-two. Yeah, Genesis thirty-five, beginning from verse twenty-two. While Israel was living at that region. Reuben went in and slept with his father's concubine, Bila, and Israel heard of it. Jacob had twelve sons. The, the sons of Leah, Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Asakar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin. The sons of Rachel's maid servant, Bila, Dan, and, Nef Dan and Nefati. The sons of Leah's uh, maid servants, Zifra, God, and Asher. Those were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Pada Aram. Man, not only we know their names, we got them in the right order. How about Dina? Do you know there is a, a daughter Leah have for Jacob by the name Le Dina? And by the way, the whole there's a whole chapter written about her in the Bible. Uh, because she was uh, uh, kidnapped or taken uh, by Shekim, who would like to marry her, who really, he truly loved her. And obviously we know from the Bible more than we can ever know from the Quran that uh, her brothers, these uh, uh, good uh, uh, macho men, uh, literally uh, tricked Shekim and his family by saying, hey, if you want to marry uh, our daughter, because, I mean, uh, he, the, the guy loved her and he was... He, he slept with her because they, they didn't go to a, a church to do a wedding there. You fall in love with somebody, you, you take her anywhere. But he should literally ask her father, but he didn't do that. But he thought she, she's going to be his wife. And then then, then the, the brother said, well, we cannot marry our sister to uh, uncircumcised. You need to all of your guys get circumcised. Okay, they all got circumcised. On the third day, they killed the last one of them. They killed all of them. And, uh, and that's why Jacob was worried about the retaliation of the people. So, and you read that, by the way, in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 36, I believe. If 34. Genesis oh, sorry, 34. Uh, 34. The one, yeah. the one chapter before that one. So anyway, so we, we got the 12 sons. But did you notice now these names are ties to their moms? Something Muhammad did not know. So here is my next question to our dear Muslim scholars those who maybe would like to debate us on that topic in the future, can you give me the names of these boys by their mama? So you're going to tell me, uh, who did uh, Leah brought to Jacob? Uh, how many sons? We said six and a girl. Okay. And he gives them to me in the right order. And then you go to Zifla. Zifla is a, a concubine of uh, Leah. Uh, and this obviously two, Jad and uh, Asakar. And then we talk about Bilha which is the, the servant or the, the, uh, the concubine of Rachel. And she got him two boys. And then we go to Rachel and got the two boys. I, can you imagine that? Ask these questions. <laughs> and we are talking about the best of the Quran. There's no answer. That's why Hatun said, don't ask. 
Don't ask to be better. And I don't want you, my dear Muslim friends, think that here, that's that's what I'm doing. It's so big deal. Who care about their names? Who care about their mother's names? Who care who's born first, who's born second? Oh, who care about the next 100 questions I'm going to ask? You got nothing. While, while like, chapter starts, this is the best story. You are asking okay. very basic questions about the story. Allah, who all-knowing kind of fails to yeah. share the very basic, doesn't know at all, no wise at all, versus yeah. God of Bible, yeah, the problem, yeah. versus mm -hmm. God of Bible, mm -hmm. gives the name of yeah. the mothers, gives attention to the woman, and then <laughs> identify these sons by their mother. And then well, gives and us the, with the like proper birth order as well. Just amazing, yeah. like how God of Bible values his people, how God of Bible expresses their um, value. Just so, be, yeah. like, show, tells us a lot about actually character of Yahweh. Sure, sure. And 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 Hatun, you have to understand. You cannot understand the Quran without understanding the answer for these questions. We see in the Quran that the brothers hate Joseph for no reason. But if you read the Bible and read the answer for this question I'm asking, now I will it will make a lots of sense that Joseph brothers hated him because of these things. But let's continue with the following verse. Go ahead, verse 8. When they said Joseph and his brothers are more loved, by a, no, but, brother, sorry. Single sister. Yeah, sorry. brother single sister when, when they said Joseph and his brother are more loved by our father than we who are more in number surely our father is in clear air once again who is speaking here oh, all Muslims tell these are Joseph brothers and they will actually give you their names wait a minute wait a minute how do you know their names? Or oh, because they read them in the Bible. Forget about the Bible. It's a corrupt book. Who needs a Bible? Something written 3,500 3, years ago. Answer the question from the Quran, Miss Muslim scholars. Don't use my Bible. So, uh, surely, they said, surely Joseph and his brother. Who is that brother? <laughs> I saw Joseph brothers are the one is talking. And he, now you tell me Joseph and his brother? What do you mean his brother? Why did it not say Joseph and John, Joseph and Smith, Joseph and Mustafa? Give me the name of the other guy. Why did they say Joseph and his brother? Oh. You know what? Maybe that's why I asked the silly question earlier about give me the names of Jacob's sons according to their mamas. Not just lumps them together with names you see if you read the genesis account as we just read in genesis 35 you found that joseph has a brother from his mother and from their fathers but muhammad does not know that because allah never know that nor jibreel if they knew it they would put it in the quran surely joseph and his brother so we can say surely joseph and benjamin are more loved by our father then we who are more in numbers well, what is their numbers in the quran you don't know well i can tell you they're 10 and a sister dina okay but muhammad could not answer that question for you and then once again surely surely this surely that i was uh, when i was translating my, my, my quran and i put this many surely in it the uh, my friend who was editing they said i hate the name surely i said why she said you repeat that name of that lady all over the quran i said no this is not the name of a lady obviously it was a comedy because there is a name in america here for a girl by the name surely but surely our father is in a clear error. is it true that jacob is in a clear clear error to love joseph and his brother whoever is this brother more than the rest of the brothers the question here we have to ask is why? Why Jacob loved Joseph and whoever this brother is, which obviously from the Bible we know it's Jacob's son, the baby son, Benjamin. Oh, Joseph and Benjamin. Now we got the two names accurate from the Bible, not from the Quran. Why Jacob loved Joseph and Benjamin 
more than the rest of the brothers. Can you give me an answer from the Quran? Um, so far, actually, did I miss it? So far, we have not even told who is his father, Osama. <laughs> well, well, uh, we're, we're we having assuming. a problem here by giving, by giving mm -hmm. the names. By giving, yeah. Or you can assume. You can assume. Yeah. So, so we, are, we are about to kind of approach the last minutes. Oh, uh, my word. I started on... Just so oh, I haven't even started talking. This we, is our we, 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 we just okay, did only you know we let's, just let's, did let me eight give you the quick verses. Answer. Well, it's okay. We're gonna next time give me a couple hours if you don't mind. If you don't mind, okay. So let me give you a quick answer for that. You see, when you read the corrupt book of the Bible in Genesis account, as Muslims claim it's corrupted, you'll be shocked that so many mysteries and so many questions in the pages of the Quran. The answer is there in that book, the Bible. You see, Jacob left his father and his mother after he cheated his brother by stealing the blessing from him. What is his brother's name? Uh, Esau. Oh, do we know anything about Esau in the Quran? Nah, nothing, <laughs> nothing. So don't worry about Jacob, don't worry about it. Let me, by the way, when you go read Ibn Kassir, the book, the beginning and the end, he talked about the story of Prophet Jacob, peace and blessing be on him. But he never told us anything about Jacob because all what he did there is he actually told us the story of Joseph according to the Bible. Because if he had brought it according to the Quran, he would not have able to answer one of these 120 questions or so. So how do we know Jacob? You know Jacob by knowing his son, Joseph. Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? You know my father by knowing me? Trust me, if you know everything about me in my life in the last 30 years living in America, you will know nothing about my father because my father was not even living with me while I'm living in America. In Egypt, I was nothing. I was just a kid. You cannot know the father through the son. You can't. And that's exactly what Ibn Kassir did in his book, The Beginning and the End. He tells the story of Jacob and his Nothing rich about Jacob because in reality, you don't know who is Jacob's brother. You know nothing about what happened between Jacob and his brother and his father and his mother. Read the Genesis accounts, you know what I'm talking about. But to make the long story short, because we only have what two minutes left, Jacob first sold his uh, uh, steel, stole the birthright from his brother Esau because he was very hungry. And he needed to eat so badly. He said, how much you pay me? He said, nothing. He said, sell me your birthright. And by the way, Muslim scholars will not understand what is birthright. Like all Muslims would not know what I'm talking about. But that's okay. Whoever comes first, he get two thirds of the inheritance of the father. And he be in charge. He carries the name of the family. Anyway, but it happens that Esau was born first and Jacob was born second. Now, Jacob want to be the first right uh, birth boy. He bought it from his brother with a dish of beans. Okay. Now... Uh, he actually pretended to be Esau. His father was a little bit old. Uh, uh, Grandpa Isaac was getting old. And he cheated him. And he pretended to be his uh, brother Esau. And uh, because uh, Jacob was loved by his mama, but Esau was loved by his father. And then his mother told him, run, son, run for your life. Why? Because Esau found out that he actually stole the blessing of the father from him. So now he actually deceived him twice. First time when he took the birthright, second time when he took the blessing of the father, and the father could not bless Esau. He said, bless me, father, bless me, father. And he wept. Bless me. Your man has no blessing for you. And the mama gives advice to Jesus for his life to go live in the land of where she and uh, is, uh, uh, Isaac and Abraham came from the land of Iraq. And when he went to the land of Babel, there's a beautiful story. Sadly, I don't have time to share it with you, from which we learn about how did Grandpa Jacob got this 12 and the beautiful dinner. So if you want to read, really know the rest of the story and why uh, Jacob more than the rest, the rest of the brothers, huh, maybe join us again in our next broadcast. What do you think of that, Hatun? Yeah, I think that would be a good place to stop. So, so far, we are looking at the story of Joseph from the Quran. Osama is kind of bringing up these very basic questions, which kind of just you need to think and practice something called logic. Um, and so far, I think 
we failed to receive any answers so far. So I tried to keep uh, eye in the chat, but there wasn't any kind of response to your questions. You brought it up. So we are, as we kind of looked first eight verse of the seven and a half verse of Surah 12 to kind of um, figure out how well detailed and um, well explained and clear this book is. I am sorry to say, I think Osama become double disappointed. That's the beauty. That's the beauty that's okay. of Muslim mind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do our best. Uh, we're in verse eight in the uh, Quran, and we'll continue to ask. At, at least, I, I guess I have another hundred questions to ask as we continue. Wow. Hopefully, hopefully, our dear Muslim will think about them, and maybe some scholar will challenge us and debate us and give us the answers. And um, yes, hopefully we will get some answer to our basic questions. But also for us as a Christian, as we look at the, uh, such a stories in the Quran where it is the kind of similar character but not the same character, um, we kind of become more uh, amazed by the beauty of our scripture, which how much details are putting, like how God inspired his people to put forward those details where our basic questions are simply being answered. Um, that's yeah. amazing by itself. Um, hopefully sure. we will pick up from verse 8 in two weeks again when we have Usama back. Um, dates are in the diary already. And then we continue to go through the story. And then hopefully in our daily engagements, we can ask those very basic logical questions to our Muslim friends. Um, brother, thank you so much for joining me. Um, really appreciate it. Very great help. And hopefully uh, we will see you in two weeks. As well as thank you very much, everyone, uh, joining us tonight. By God's grace, we will see you on another live stream or at Speaker's Corner or Bosom of the Father, wherever it's the first one. God bless you all.